Welcome, everybody. Great to have you with us here on our global web stream for the Pirelli World Challenge. And boy, are we looking forward to this one. We are set to go here at Road America in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. It is a glorious day, Cal. Maybe a little humid, but temperatures low 80s, a little bit of a breeze out there. And this place is packed. We have a crowd here extraordinaire, and I think they're in for a show coming up. It's so cool to be back here at Road America. I wasn't at the event last year. Great to be back on these grounds and uh, to be sharing it with the Indy cars once again. Uh, it's been too long since those boys have been uh, here, and it's exactly. uh, just really developed a great passion in the locality in terms of how many fans are out here. They are here for the testing, and uh, just massive crowds on hand today on Friday, and we expect more uh, for the weekend. Few communities embrace the racetrack that's next door to them like this place does because they truly have a history that is hand-in-hand. And I'll tell you, what we've been seeing, too, in terms of the improvements to the physical plant here at Road America is absolutely stunning. Big screens now, a track at four miles. That that was uh, you know something that uh, we knew would be a tremendous addition, but they've done even more than that. It's absolutely great. The best news is, is not one change, really, to the racetrack itself. It is the original Road America layout still, and it's spectacular. It's as good as it gets. It's in uh, length and uh, 14 very different courses. You've got to have good medium speed downforce. There's some really high speed sections like the Kink, of course, and a GT car, which are very challenging. And uh, you need straightaway speed. It's all about what sort of aero you run in the compromise between drag and downforce. And 50 minutes of racing, and normally, I mean, that's a sprint race, obviously, but with this humidity here today, Cal, and these enclosed cars that are very shut down for aerodynamics and the like, it's going to be a long day in the office for these lads. It's going to be a long day. It's also going to be a long day for those tires if we get long yeah. green flag runs, and I think that's what everyone's looking at in terms of the makeup of the grid. We've got some really quick cars there, but some of those cars haven't shown the ability to really perform over a long run. Yeah. And um, so they could have good track position at the beginning, how the drivers manage that, what the car's balance is like, particularly when you look at a corner like this, the carousel, where it really lows the left side tires, depending on your balance. If you've got a bit of push, it'll be that left front. If it's a little bit loose, it'll be the left rear in terms of maintaining that over the course of 50 minutes yeah this one is is a tricky turn it's way more than 180 degrees it just takes a long time but it folds back on itself falls down a hill goes off camber i mean it is a great challenge now as always when we do our global webcast you're sort of eavesdropping as we build our cbs sports network show so i just always want to give the caveat that there might be times where we lay out we may be talking uh, directly to our producers and working on format and traffic and that sort of thing. We'll always be with you as much as we can, of course, but when we do have these pauses, that's the reason for that. And uh, we are just waiting now for that command to get the engine started here for this 12th round of the championship. And uh, it's going to be absolutely superb. We're looking forward to it, no question about that. And again, three classes, GT. GTA, same cars in GTA as in GT, just drivers that don't make their living professionally as race car drivers. And then the GT Cup class, and there's a big story there. You know, identical cars, then you have two superb teams, and then, well, more than two, but I mean what we're talking about here, two superb teams, two superb drivers coming in here dead even in the points, qualifying, finally gave Alec Udell right. the point lead back. That's how close it is at the halfway point. It's been a great season, and uh, last year we saw Colin Thompson dominate the class, but he was challenged by those two young guys, Udell and uh, Yuri, over the course of the championship season, and they've come out head-to-head -head battle. Corey Fergus, we expected to be in that mix. He struggled to really get to grips with his new car, but this weekend he has shown signs. He split those two boys on the yeah. grid, so uh, certainly great potential for Corey to be looking at maybe a win or certainly a, a runner-up finish here today, the pace he's been showing so far. Yeah, after that big hit at St. Pete, they've mm. just been chasing the car a little bit, and they finally got their heads around it again, and uh, you know he's got great skill. That's not the, uh, the issue at all, so that is going to be fun, seeing Pat Long getting buckled in and everybody waiting for that command to get this going again in GT this season. Uh, now, both races are rolling starts. Some of these GT3 cars just not designed for the loads uh, for a standing start. So they are both rolling starts. It doesn't seem to have made it any less exciting. We've seen some pretty spectacular stuff happen on these starts. Cal, you were talking about making the tires last a little bit. I mean, Adderley Fong and the Bentley, tremendous run, late lap to pole. Not a surprise because it takes that car because it's so good on tires, a little longer to get everything up to going. So you, if they're going to go quick, it's usually later. But you, if it stays green, I mean, this could be a Bentley day. 
It really could. I mean, uh, Dyson Racing had three poles here for the triple header last year, so the Bentley is strong here. Adley's coming to this track he doesn't know. Uh, the team have, have said, you know, we're not used to running this brand of tyre, so we're learning about it, and we certainly show great pace at most sport and at the last round at Lime Rock Park, where uh, Andrew Palmer was really on form there that weekend and uh, grabbed the pole position. But... Um, you know, so, yeah, I mean, you think the Bentley, it seems to be easy on its tires. As you said, it takes longer to come in. It's not really generating, getting the car, the tire to come to life so quickly. But that pays dividends over the long run. So, going to be a lot of pressure on Adley. He's, he's won races around the globe, but um, he hasn't won yet in World Challenge, and he's got a lot of really tasty oh, competitors boy. right around him. He does. There's one of them, and that's our GTA pole sitter. That's Frankie Bonacalvo. Pretty remarkable that he put that in pole. We were talking to him. They're still dealing with that issue at the back of the car, and he said he's literally got opposite lock through the kink here that's commitment yes that's not a place where you need the car snapping on you and he just said he can't trust it and he said he laid down the video uh, from last year and compared to this it's like it's two different race cars and it really should be the same not much has changed between last year and this for frankie montecalvo so they're looking forward to maybe getting a new chassis uh, underneath him with that old platform for the next round of the championship at mid ohio and there's also the new mercedes uh, online that you may see it towards the end of the championship year all right, and there is a look at Alec Udell, who is on the pole as he is ready to go in the GT Cup category. It is his third pole of the season in that GMG number 17 Euro World Car. There is Corey Fergus alongside, and uh, what a, it is a great story in that Buyers Porsche US LED uh, uh, team, the Motion Promotions team, uh, finally back up on the front row. And uh, looking forward, Sloan Uri basically has said that they are fighting a little bit of a loose condition as well here and just trying to sort through that. Yeah, and that's been with him for a while now. I mean, he came out of the box so strongly uh, at the start of the season and looked like he was going to sort of like dominate the championship. And there's been a big swing. Udell has found his feet and uh, he and the team have really found a sweet spot with the setup. Conversely, Sloan went through that wrist injury. He's not 100%. He's almost there, but he had that injury, which kind of threw him a bit of a curveball. And uh, since that time, the car has not quite been underneath him. And uh, it's a spec car, so there's not a ton you can do. That's what's yeah. uh, kind of confused Corey Fergus and that group there. It's like, it's a spec car. How can we be that far out of the window? But, again, they're sensitive race machines, and if you just got something a bit off, it can hurt you. And the field makes its way now behind the Cadillac ATS VR pace car. Absolutely a fantastic piece of equipment from a company that is a tremendous partner for this series. And we watch this field take to this track from pit lane. And with a four-mile lap, only one pace lap is necessary, certainly. And then we will be ready to go racing for 50 minutes of competition. And Cal, you know, certain things to take a look at here. One of them... Second and third on the grid, the Acuras. They have come alive from real-time racing at this track. A lot of experience here, but I think one of the questions is, will they be there at the end? Well, that's the big question, Mark. They've certainly shown tremendous pace. They've tested here. Their race shop is down in Sockville. It's just 30 minutes away from the front gates here. So... Um you know, they're expecting great things here today, but we saw at Lime Rock, Ryan Eversley had a podium run going there. He lost it right at the very end because the tires went away from him. He's worried about it. Petey said, no, my car is fine. So he said, we got it covered. Ryan's worried I'm not. Here's a look at the Cadillac Escalade. That's the official safety vehicle. Nice to have it. We hope it stays right there where people can walk by and look at it, but it never has to come out on the track, obviously. Uh, our great safety team on board there. Let's talk a little bit about... Uh, uh, to start, I think that's where we're going to see some excitement because J.D. Davison, once again, didn't qualify up front, but he likes to get there in a hurry. He does, and uh, he doesn't make any qualms about the fact that's when he can make the, uh, make the moves at the start and the restarts. He's going to be going for it. All right, we're going to step away. When we come back, we will have a look at some onboards and go racing here at Road America.
Matt Merritt have him all the way turned down. He's blind. He's, he's blasting you. He, he's loud, but he's not yeah. that loud to okay. me, so it must be yours. All right, lights are out on the pace car. We are ready to go racing. Here's a look at our Kia Quad Box featuring some of the onboard cameras from Replay XD. Great video. You're going to enjoy these as the race unfolds, and it is about to do just that. They have entered the VP Racing Fuels acceleration zone. The pace car will accelerate away into the pit lane, and as that happens, now it's down to that Gray Bentley and our starter in the VP Racing Fuels acceleration zone to set this 50-minute 12th round of the championship on its way a couple of cars lagging back just a little bit here and of course you see the gap back to the gt cup cars and we've got a wave off we have not seen that in a while but i'll tell you it was just the front couple of rows were in pretty good shape but the rest of the field cal was a bit scraggly and i think they decided no we're going to neaten this one up well you had guys screaming up this main straightaway and could easily have had a 30 40 miles head of steam on the rest of the pack so i think it was the smart call it's not what you want to do on a four four mile racetrack but certainly the field was way too far spread out yeah just a huge margin between them now so that means we are going to have to bring them around again, and we will do the start sequence one more time. And those of you joining us here in the Global Web, we're going to pick it up as, uh, as we did here uh, back over in the turn 12, 13 area, and we will do that again for the CBS Sports Network coverage. So we're just with you here on the web at this point. But uh, now what happens at this point, Cal? I mean, everybody was geared up for that start. They didn't get it. This is such a long lap. What are they working on right now as they come back around? Well, they may try and start to get a bit better feel. I mean, on that initial pace lap, there's no real tire temperature, even though it's a relatively warm day. Here, you may see the cars spread out a little bit, squirt through a corner, try and get a feel for the balance, for what they will actually feel when they go hard at it racing-wise. That's the uh, Look at this. Just a, such a, a tremendous view here as a fan as well because you know from the driver's perspective you're driving through the trees and the like from the fans perspective you're sitting in a forest it is they call it the america's national park of speed it has that feel to it and uh, i think better than any other venue it has kept alive that feeling of the uh, days in the late 40s early 50s when you actually ran on public roads around here that was the whole concept when they did uh, design this place and boy it worked it really did. It's a superb facility, the one that the fans love. There's so many great viewing areas. They've improved those since last year as well, and uh, certainly for us coming here and calling this sort of action. But thinking about it, the clock has started, so uh, we talked about tire degradation. That's already sort of like swinging towards the Acura away a little bit <laughs> yeah. in terms of knocking some time off the clock. They don't have to run as long. This is the one down through. There's that turn we were talking about, the exit. You can see how it comes down the hill there at the carousel in the back of the screen. And you're building a huge amount of speed, and then this turn is just, they call it a kink. It's not. It's a turn. <laughs> it's a big-time turn. <laughs> and uh, you really have to get it right. You have to hit your marks. You need the time to be good and the balance to be good through that corner. All right. Yeah, imagine getting sideways through there, like Frankie said. Mm. Sideways enough, he threw a stone up and hit one of the cameras. <laughs> All right, we're going to pause, folks. When we come back, we will be on CBS Sports TV. Welcome back to Road America, everybody, and it is time to go racing. Field coming around, taking up their side-by-side -side positions, going to be entering that VP Racing Fuels acceleration zone, and we want to show you now our Kia Quad Box and the remarkable cameras, the uh, Replay XD uh, cameras that give us such great onboard videos. Lots of those you're going to be enjoying today. But the field now onto the front straight, going to bunch up just a little bit here. There you see it. Brakes on. Everybody packing up. And we're looking for the start here as they come up the hill here at Road America. And there's the green. We go. And look at Eversley. Speaking of going, he got a great launch. Oh, there's Go a touch contact. there. Contact between John Fogarty and Colin Thompson. Thompson nearly got sideways there. But to the front go the Acuras around the outside of the Bentley. 
ooh, little touch there. And uh, J.D. Davison, we talked about a Watch what he was going to try and do. He had a little bit of a squeeze play. It caught him out this time. And look at Johnny O'Connell and Cooper in that black Cadillac. Nice move by Cooper trying to get around Long on the outside of three. Yeah, and Long just uses all of the road there. Now Michael's in the dirt. He's going to lose tracks and lose several positions there. What a start for Ryan Eversley. Here comes P.D. Cunningham. Boy, those Acuras are getting out of corners incredibly well. And we know they've got legs on the straights. And Cunningham now into second. But the Bentley from far. That's really too late. late. That's too late. He's not going to make it work there. We talked about it in the stop tech break zone. Look at that. Pat Long's through. Johnny O'Connell's going to go with him. Alvaro Parent and Davison side by side into turn six. And that's a huge story. Parent actually at one point had ended up 11th in qualifying. Lost the lap because of exceeding track limits then they reviewed it and said no nah, he was actually okay put him back in seven that's your points leader that's huge Kyle Marcelli he's had a strong run of late Boy, three consecutive been. podiums look at the red dragon to the outside of Martin Fuentes nice move there by John Fogarty Fogarty a lot of racing history here at this track never a win and it is chomping away at it you know that bothers him just a little bit but uh, we were talking about Fuentes, but Frankie Montecalvo, I think, actually added a couple of positions on that start in terms of a cushion to lead GTA. Look at that. Fong got a nice run there through the kink. He's got a run on Johnny O'Connell now as they head down towards Canada Corner into the break zone. And Long also concerned about the pace of O'Connell, so he went right down the middle of the track. That's totally legal. He just can't move in reaction to another driver, so he made the move, stay put. And it was enough to dissuade O'Connell from attempting anything. But look at Eversley, the lead he's opening up. And look at the cars dancing as they come up and through the Billy Mitchell bridge. What used to be the bridge turn, now just the Billy Mitchell corner, Cal, dropping tires. Fong has some pace right now. He made that little mistake down at the stop, take breaks, and lost a lot of positions. But he is starting to make some moves, putting the pressure on Johnny O'Connell. Prince having to defend a little bit. He's positioning that McLaren to the right side of the straightaway. Oh, here he comes, looking down the inside here. And nope, not quite going to do it. Now we're going to go back and replay uh, and have a look at what happened in GT Cup at the start. And you can see Yuri was able to get around and make the move. But here's how the start unfolded, Cal, coming up. And you know Fergus is antsy here, and uh, he was ready to go. But for some reason, Welch laying way back at this stage. But look at Fergus, and he may, it looked like here, have actually gotten the nose ahead by the start stand. Well, he loves this race, right? He's yeah. got a lot of confidence. He's been tweaking on the car. They've been testing, and uh, he's trying to put it in a good effect here today. Udell, though, holds that inside position. Corey slides it around at the outside. But Udell is uh, still in front, but Yuri's made the position up to P2. Able to slide through, and oh no, the 05, that is the Nissan GT Academy, Nissan Nismo, Brian Heitkotter, down into the pits. He won one of the GTA races here last year in that category. But now, well, anytime you pit in this series, it's a bad moment for you, but this one looks like it's going to take a while. Well, he won in the GTA division here last year. And the Nissan boys are expecting great things, but right now it's all about Acura. They run one, two, a brilliant start by Ryan Eversley. Petey Cunningham on the move early as well. Parent, though, our championship leader. This is a day he just has to manage his expectations. He realized that McLaren has superb downforce, but it's going to be a little bit draggier down these straightaways. Cooper's got a run on him. He's got a run, and clearly you can see that Davison has some speed here, even though he got caught out at the start. Now, side-by-side, -side, Cal, down into Canada. Well, Parent was dropping wheels on the right-hand side of the road. <laughs> oh, That's how far right he was going, making Michael Cooper go the long way around. It's going to be a long day for Alvaro Parent with the straightaway speed of some of his competition. Yeah, they're just uh, not quite there. They said it's just a, it's a boost thing. They're just a little low on boost, and it's hurting the torque almost more than anything else. The launch out of the corners, not so much the top end. And Heikotter, boy, that was a quick fix. Whatever it was, good news for him. Yeah, hopefully it has been fixed. They kept it on the lead lap. That's the nice thing about Road America. You have a problem. Typically, if you've got a relatively small issue, you can get it back out there. If it gets a yellow, maybe you can get back into the mix. And here's that battle once again. Parent and Cooper continuing to duke it out here. That seventh spot. You can see Eversley has opened up a margin over two seconds right now over teammate Cunningham, who's got almost a second in hand over Long. And then some of the rest of the battle and coming down the hill here. And there is the number 13, and that is the Capex Racing entry of Colin Thompson. And he is going to be our Optima Battery's Best Start Award winner, up three spots overall 
on that opening lap. So although they're not exactly having the best pace right now uh, at this track in particular, it was a good opening lap for Colin Thompson and wins one of the prestigious specialty awards here. Watching him as he works his way up and through our stop tech braking zone. Oh, your points leader in GTA, Martin Fuentes in the Hublot Under Armour machine. He is in, and you can see Kelly. Apparently, he's done a little agricultural racing there. So they, and they've been struggling with temperatures in this car for most of the season anyway. They have, and he's had an off, and he must have started to see those temperatures start to rise. He's in there getting the grills cleaned off. Hopefully, he had no uh, big damage to that Ferrari. There's the number six. That is Frankie Montecalvo from Pole. Has a nice margin now in GTA, especially with Fuentes as he makes his way out, having some problems. And we get a report from Jeff down in pit lane, the 05 height cutter. The problem was an intake tube probably on the intercooler that they had to do a quick fix on. So that's the story here. We're going to pause right now. We'll be right back with more from Road America and the Pirelli World Challenge. So while we're in break for the uh, TV here, we are going to continue. And, oh, there's Heikotter right back in again, having a little bit of an issue. Yeah, I assume they didn't get a fix done. It sounded like it was misfiring a bit when he took off from pit lane. Uh, further up there, Martin Fuentes had to change the right rear. So uh, he must have got into it somewhere, I'd imagine, around that. That was pretty hectic first couple of laps there, and he was right in the middle of the mix. Boy, he was right in it, as you said. We'll go back here and uh, look at what's unfolding here. And, you know, the uh, Cadillacs here, after uh, you watch their run that they had at, at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, and they were clearly struggling, Cal. They got to the track at Lime Rock, shorter, able to a little bit more momentum, didn't have that long straight where they had to climb. They were right back in it. Coming in here, they got an adjustment given back to them a little bit, just a little bit of boost. They valued it around 20 horsepower or so. Uh, it's not exactly the same as it was previously, but what it's done is it's at least brought them back into the game, hasn't it? It has, and uh, they can race from there, and they realize they typically have very consistent race cars over a longer run. So they're up there. They've got uh, Johnny O'Connell in the fourth position, Cooper a bit further back, having uh, had that moment uh, dropping some wheels there in the early laps. But uh, Johnny O, you know, is, that's his trademark. He knows how to make the right moves, and he'll be looking up ahead, watching those anchors, pacing off of those guys, and just seeing if they start to fade a little bit. Yeah, and they are just watching Ryan Eversley right now, and it looks like he is being very precise on all of his inputs, not trying to run too wide, not trying to overstress these tires, and yet still be able to produce some pretty solid speeds out of the car. And uh, they, they understand the game, too. It's just, can they do it? Yeah, and they'll be learning. I mean, they, they've been in the position before. Ryan has certainly where he's had a strong position underneath the car and uh, fade a little bit at the end so he doesn't need to drive away from this field he just needs to manage those tires and make sure he's got some life in them for the last 10 minutes or so ryan eversley continues to lead here at the home track for the team real-time racing located in sockville wisconsin and for a little bit in qualifying it looked like they might have a one-two sweep of the front row and then a guy named fong and a bentley decided to play the game but as Everly continues to lead, here is a replay of the start, Cal. And uh, we know that Eversley just got a great run. But look at Davison in the move. And now watch, there's a moment here where he comes back across, and that just packs everybody up. And look, look at High Cutter. <laughs> wow, he just dives it down the inside of his teammate. He was committed there totally. Davison get another, gets another run at him down into turn three. And it didn't look at that stage as we watched that replay that at that point there was any damage to the uh, 07 of Martin Fuentes, who is back into the pits now. Right rear damage on that car. They changed the tire. That right rear tire cleaned the grill out of the car, but now it looks like the, there may be some more problems with that car, Cal. Yeah, and this is a shame. He had such a dominating start to the championship, but he was really <laughs> in the cauldron there in terms of where he was at on the racetrack. There's a lot of argy-bargy going on there in the middle of the pack, and obviously someone got into his right corner. And since we're looking at uh, fixes to tires and suspensions and the like, we look here at Ryan Eversley, who is carrying our iBox suspension cam. So let's take a look at what's going on on the underside of this car. And again, this is one of those tracks. It's, uh, you know, it's in Wisconsin, so it's fairly smooth, but it's got its bumps. And you run wide over those curbs, it gives you a ride. Suspension and setup, massive. It really is, particularly through that long carousel corner. You've got to get it right through there, and you've got these uh, resurface segments to the racetrack, which will uh, 
sort of like play havoc with you. Understand they give them really good grip, but you still got to get the car working over the variance in terms of the surface type around this race circuit. And we just got a report, even though we haven't seen it, that the same tube came loose again on Heitkotter's car, and he's back in the pits. So it just turned into a very long day for that. So a bit of a problem uh, for that car. And uh, unfortunately, it's going to be a long day for them. But for Ryan Eversley, he's just now stretched that margin, Cal, up to almost two and a half seconds. Yeah, and he's got the fastest lap of the race right now at 207.817. And importantly, the fast laps today will determine the grid for tomorrow. So his teammate has got an eight flat underneath him. The rest of the field low to mid eights. That is 208 range. So... Right now, the Acura's doing everything they need to do, but there's still a long, long way to go. Boy, what a result this would be. Certainly don't want to jinx it here, but pretty special stuff. There is Petey Cunningham. And look Fong at this battle behind now. Yep, Fong coming after O'Connell. Yeah, I thought he had some strength there, and I think just that sort of a rash moment, really, down in our stop tech break zone, down in the turn five on the opening lap, cost him dearly, because I think he's got a lot more pace than the guys he ran right now. I think he should be able to chase down the leaders, but to what effect? Yeah, that's going to move him now up into the fourth spot where O'Connell sits six, point, uh, six seconds back. Ooh, boy, did he just get underneath. Now the question is, does Johnny have anything for him into the uh, stop tech braking zone? And I think he's a bit too far back, Cal. He is. J.D. Far. just cleared him easily. Cooper now. Look at Perrin late on the brakes. He'd be into the ABS right there. Otherwise, he's going to take out Johnny Red. <laughs> that was very late. He had Michael Cooper all over the back of him, but... Uh, Johnny was maybe not quite as aggressive into the brake zone and nearly cut Alvaro out. It's interesting with Perrin. You know, normally he's a pretty fun love and he loves to chat and talk and visit. And with the struggles they've been having in terms of the speed and in qualifying, when he realized that they were going to get that lap back and they jumped from 11th to 7th, it's like he just shut down and went into command focus mode. And you can see he's doing what he can. Boy, Fuente still struggling big time and letting everybody slice through. Nice job staying on the outside of this tricky carousel. Meanwhile, in GT Cup, Alec Udell is just in a zone right now, Cal. He really is. I mean, he's just found the sweet spot with the setup, and he's gaining confidence, it seems, week in, week out, and uh, he's going to be tough to beat. I mean, uh, Sloan Yuri, yep. Corey Fergus are going to challenge him hard, but right now he is definitely the man to beat in GT Cup. Yeah, I mean, he and Nev, they, are, they said they really found the sweet spot on this car, and it's obviously being exploited well by the uh, engineering student from Clemson University as he whistles through turn seven and down the hill. Parked it relatively early in qualifying and watched the rest of the guys go chase down his time and uh, grab those very important seven points as they were tied coming into this championship round. Yeah, there's Yuri who's uh, into that solid second now in the Security National and Evasis car, a software, construction-related software that he is writing. And it's in the beta <laughs> program right now. It tells you that the kid's relatively bright, huh? And yeah, boy, look at this. Uh, Parent is great in to the brakes in certain areas, but Cooper is hunting big time right now. Yeah, and getting back to Alvaro Parent, you said, you know, he is very intense in terms of he recognized this is going to be a tough race for him. It's one thing when you right. have the fastest car or you're on the front row or whatever, and you're just thinking about moving forward. But he knew that today he was going to have to be in defense mode and managing this race and just trying to maximize as many points as he can. It's your bad days in the championship season that win you the championship, not necessarily your good ones. That's a very good point. There's Frankie Montecalvo, who, of course, is the reigning GTA champion, and he started his run to that championship right here at Road America, winning two of the three races and went on to do it. Can he do it again? Well, he's leading and leading comfortably right now here at Road America. Stay with us. Well, with you here at the Global Web Feed, we just got an update from Pit Lane that you've seen uh, Johnny O'Connell's car is uh, struggling just a little bit out there. We get a report that uh, he has reported a misfire in that car, so that's never a good thing, particularly at Road America with uh, all these straights. And uh, Fuente is still suffering some overheating in that car. And uh, it's the car, not Martin, but uh, it is certainly a problem. But, boy, this is what you were talking about, Cal Fong, and that Bentley and the relative pace to everybody else. He is just made up two seconds on long in a heartbeat. Yeah, he's got a very, oh, this is a big move here. This is Michael Lewis and Austin Sindrick going at it hard. Great to see Michael Lewis back in the championship, having a missed a couple of events. Yeah, it really is. Team now in the Calder Dynamics team with Andrew Davis. 
And the good news for that team, obviously, is that uh, when Michael came, they brought the car that they were running as the effort program as Martin Fuentes is out. And, boy, this is a huge development. The runaway point leader, some 260 points he leads by, but it's 110 for a win. And if he only gets fifth or sixth place points here in Fuentes, that's going to be a big chunk and could certainly change the swing of well, things. I think he's got to do twi- he's got to do 50% of the race, I believe, Greg, to get oh, points. Right. And he hasn't he done hasn't that, so done he could get either. a zero score. Oh, boy, and look at this. Perez underneath O'Connell. And again with that miss, that's going to yeah. slow up O'Connell's exit of that turn, and Cooper might have a shot at him here as well. I think that's why J.D. Davison cleared O'Connell so easily yeah. because of Johnny O's issue. But he's hanging in there a little bit. Maybe the draft has just given him enough to make up for the performance issue. All right, folks, we're just about ready to come back on our CBS Sports Network feed. So hang with us. Back in Road America, Alvaro Parent is on the move, but part of it is because the red Cadillac of Johnny O'Connell is reporting a slight misfire and Parent has been able to come through, and Cal, that has now put him up into the sixth spot. And boy, this is exactly what he needed in terms of just managing and salvaging points, and he's getting a little bit of help. He's doing a great job here, and this will maybe explain why Johnny O was cleared so easily by J.D. Davison on the run down to our stop tech break zone just a few laps ago. So Johnny O is in uh, damage control right now. He's got to get that candy to the finish. And Martin Fuentes has retired from this race, and it's before the 50% distance. While GTA leader may get a zero-point score here today. That is huge. Yeah, it's massive. There is the car in pit lane, and they said it is just. They can see Martin getting out now as it is struggling with overheating. There was damage to that right rear corner, but that wasn't the issue. The report is it's just serious overheating in that car, and they've dealt with that at other parts of the season. They thought that they had it solved, but clearly it's going to be a bite today. And Cal, in terms of points... For tomorrow, you know, for, too. For, they, oh, you know, if that huge. engine is damaged, do they have a spare motor on the truck? Can they get it changed in time? Meanwhile, Kyle Marcelli, a man who we thought would be really quick here, Certainly showed some pace in practice. A little bit disappointed with his qualifying runs. Had a quiet start to this race, but now he's the next man to have uh, Johnny O as the target. And Johnny O, I think, playing the team card nicely there. He's realized he was probably holding Cooper up, and Cooper has gone through and opened it up a little bit, and Cooper seems to have some pace, so we'll see what he's able to do. But now down to the inside, Marcelli making the move as well, and slices by Johnny O'Connell. There is no question, Cal, that Cadillac is wounded. It is, and, uh, you know, Carl Marcelli is on a strong run out of three podium finishes here in the last couple of months. Team knows how to get the job done here. Mike Skeen had a double victory here in 2014 at a podium run last year. And there is Monty Calvo, who right now finds himself 10th overall, leading in GTA uh, in a car that is not handling particularly well. But, boy, he got some help here, obviously. With the problem for Fuentes, there's a slew of GT cars between himself and and Michael Shine, who sits in second, and Shine has three wins in this category this year in the 16 Wright Motorsports Porsche. And then how neat is it? Andy Wilsock is here in the number 45 Flying Lizard Motorsports Porsche, carrying that livery once again. And then here is Alec Udell, and uh, he's just continuing to hang that margin out to right about two and a half seconds, and he's been managing it beautifully. I think maybe one of the surprises of the race so far is the performance of Michael Shine. I mean, he's yeah. running second in GTA, but his lap times are about a second and a half off of Monte Calvo. So he may be buried in traffic right now that is precluding him from uh, uh, getting the job done. I expected him to be challenging for the, the victory in class here today, but he's a long way down the order. I do too. He's got experience on yep. this track in, uh, in the GT Cup series. And in, uh, he also, as we've seen pace from him this year, that's been pretty impressive. So... Yeah, it does make you wonder what might be unfolding here. But, boy, those two Acuras right now. Eversley has three seconds on Cunningham, who's got three seconds on Long. But then the battle is close, Cal, and that battle between Long and Fong, that is closing up. Look at this, though. Fastest lap of the race is Brian Heidkotter at 207.39. So that's big news for tomorrow's race. If he can maintain that, that yeah, would give him the poll. Right now, the Acuras are 207.5 for Eversley, 207.6 for Cunningham. Fong into the 207 bracket as well. 
And you just saw, we were just talking about Wilson in that flying lizard Porsche Cal, all kinds of sideways exiting <laughs> Canada Corner. He is under attack by a gentleman that is truly a delight to have back in the Prolly World Challenge GT ranks, Mike McCann who, if you remember back in the day, if you've been a fan for a long time, used to run Viper Competition Coupes in the series in the GT ranks, has some very, very strong finishes. And uh, the last year, the year after the original Cadillac factory effort ended, if you remember those Remington Cadillacs, that was his program he put together. He and Andy Pilgrim ran those, those uh, caddies for one more year. It's been a long time, but he's got the Yeti Coolers uh, Viper. That's the car that Tim Pappas used to run, that Dodge Viper. And uh, he now has it, and uh, it's great to have him back in the championship. Johnny O'Connell oh, continues to fall further down the order. That's now for the ninth position that Austin Sindrick holds to O'Connell down to 10th. A disaster for Johnny Reddy. Is he trying to scramble into this championship lead? It's not going to happen here today with uh, the guys he's chasing up in front of him. Through the kink. Oh, look at this. Oh, this is it. Fong has a run. <laughs> he has a run on Patrick Long. Can he clear him? Side by side. That is wild action right there. Great job by do both drivers giving each other a little bit of room. Yep. I think uh, you could tell Long realized he lost that little bit of momentum. And when he got alongside, he's got to keep an eye big picture on this championship in terms of points. And you look at where he sits in the championship relative to where Parent is, it would be silly to battle for a third or second spot and end up wrecking yeah absolutely and uh, pat long is smart enough to realize this but i think he was hoping there'd be a few more cars between he and alvaro yeah. Perez. there's only one right now and that's jd davison yeah jd davison is showing some speed at this stage of the race as well but nobody's showing the pace right now like ryan eversley in the number 43 accurate tlx gt from real-time racing and HPD, Honda Performance Development. Just got so, fastest lap. He just took it away from Brian Hardcutter by a couple of hundreds. That's huge. And we talk about that in terms of starting position, pole points. That's big news as well. So Everly, Eversley leads it in GTA. There's your number 66, Frankie Monacalvo, continuing to lead in the GTA category and has it fairly handily. And he's coming up on Johnny O'Connell and wants through as well. O'Connell not just going to give that up all that easily, but certainly right now that Mercedes is moving and moving very quickly out on this track and Frankie giving it a great ride. And in GT Cup, it is still Alec Udell out front and that margin now is actually just eked away a little bit more, almost three seconds over Sloan Yuri. So that's your top three or top three drivers in the three classes. We'll come back to Road America in just a bit. All right, folks, back with you here on the web. Again, just having a bit of a chat with the producers. And here now comes Monte Calvo down to the inside of Johnny O'Connell. And Johnny taking it in deep into turn one. I think Frankie's just given our four-time champ a lot of respect there. I think typically he'd push it down the inside, but that's given John Fogarty the run that he wants in the Red Dragon. The 99 slides down to the inside. The team that really come out of the box pretty strong had that podium run at Coda with the 99 machine, and then they had the incident at Long Beach and they haven't really been able to find their own tail since then. Did a test at Salt Lake City at Miller Motorsports Park recently, had a McLaren factory driver come in to uh, give.
give them some information and make sure that John Fogarty was, uh, you know, and, and that was John's idea. He right. said, yeah, just let's see if it's me or if it's the car. And they were both given uh, the same feedback and running really identical lap times. But it certainly uh, allowed John to really understand the McLaren a bit better. He realized he's got to undo some of his driving style and uh, drive the car a little bit looser than he'd like to have it. Yeah, and that's, uh, it, well, that's a good point because they've been talking about it. They've been chasing their tail is the way you, how you put it, that the back end's been loose. But apparently that might just be how the car works at its best. And uh, that was a nice piece of driving there by Monte Calvo, as you said, giving Johnny a lot of respect. And then, though, when you saw Fogarty go by him, he just tucked right in through and was able to drive by him as well. But uh, just watching, as we're seeing here, there is... The number 43 and now here comes Petey Cunningham and it's great to see Petey Cunningham running at this pace you know he's I think he's been a little bit consumed by the team owner role here and of course then when you saw Eversley have that incident up at Mosport and his car wasn't able to run uh, Petey stepped out of his car to let Ryan who was better placed in the points at that time uh, run it and everything and I think you know there were some people that were going wow you know Petey's been doing this a long time what's no no he's just fine thank you very much and uh, he's been able to get out and show it now but it does point out what a revelation Ryan Eversley has been since he's joined this championship I think it? he's great for this group he's great for the brand he's great for Acura he's a kind of the social media wizard I mean he's a, he's a funny guy he's a true character he represents Acura very well well, and he gets the job done behind the wheel, and he's a good fit for that team. It's a bunch of characters on that group led by Nathan Bonneau, and uh, Ryan's the perfect fit. And, it's, you know, is, is there another driver out there who's half a tenth quicker? I don't know, but right. certainly <laughs> in terms of the fit with that race team, it doesn't matter. Ryan is the man. Well, we're getting a report, folks, that the number 13 of Colin Thompson, yeah, he, we heard he was slowing down now into the pits. And this has just been a tough stretch oh. for Colin Thompson. You know, what, 13 of 18 races he won last year in Cup. Third on the grid at Long Beach. You know he's fast, and it's just all gone wrong here on a few different levels for this very talented driver and this great team. He just doesn't seem to catch a break. He's visiting yeah. pit lane way too often in terms of little niggly problems, uh, cut ties and stuff that he's seen throughout the course of the year, a little bit of contact here and there. And it uh, looks like it's more of an issue on the right rear corner, maybe a brake issue they're going to possibly. By the way, we got a report that the damage in the back of Fuente's car oh. might have come from Andrew Davis in a little bump there. So as we go back to Ryan Eversley, and Petey Cunningham has uh, taken a, a little bit back on that lead here. It's trimmed down mm. to 2.6 seconds from just a tick over three. And again, we're still looking for that cliff in terms of... Uh, lap time and tire performance from these guys have uh, 18 just uh, just under 19 minutes remaining but again it's nice when you've got your teammate who's chasing you versus yeah. someone else <laughs> who's going to give you a harder time that's true that's uh, yeah a friendly face in the mirror here all right we're going to pause folks we're going to come back to cbs in just a sec Uh, an iconic shot here at Road America as the field pops out from underneath the Briggs and Stratton Bridge down into turn three. Hugely important corner as they feed the throttle down the Moraine sweep. And Ryan Eversley continues to hang on to the lead, doing a superb job. But Cal, another look at this start, and it was just a look like straight line acceleration for Eversley was able to just get him to the lead. It was. He did, oh, look at the bump there. That was really close between John Fogarty and Colin Thompson. Great hands there by Colin Thompson. Look at that, how tight it was between Johnny O and J.D. Davison with the pit lane, Ooh. and then High Carter was just committed. <laughs> he just elbowed his way past his teammate. Yeah, well, he J.D. Davison it. That's what <laughs> yeah. he did, man. That was absolutely great. I had a chat with the boys before the start of the autograph session today, and J.D. said, I'm going to be going for it on the opening lap. And I uh, laughed at Brian and said, well, just get in his wake, mate. And he took me literally, I think, there. I think he did, absolutely. And I wonder if that little touch with Fogarty and Thompson is what may have caused Thompson's problems. Very good point. And there is the 13 down into the pits. We had a report he was slowing, and now into the pits he comes. Oh, it's a tough, tough season for a very talented driver. I mean, 13 races he won out of 18 last year in the Cup. Third on the grid at Long Beach. No question about his speed and his pace. Luck? That might be a different story. Yeah, it's just not going his way right now. They go to the right rear corner. There's a block going underneath the car, so there's a bigger issue than just a cut tire. But you're right. He did have the bump. That would have been on the left side. But I'm not sure if he touched the wall at the same time on the right side. 
because it got very tight there on the green flag. Good news is he's back out, but even there, Cal, just looks really twitchy in a spot where you wouldn't necessarily expect it at that stage. He'd already sort of be straightened out out of Billy Mitchell. So issues for him. And uh, speaking of issues, uh, we've got some issues with the Cadillac team as well. Johnny O'Connell has been struggling just a little bit here, reported misfire in that car, and he's just sort of dropped down the order. And that is huge, Cal, because he was absolutely one of our top points players and was going for a fifth straight championship. Oh, he's got really bad now because his last lap was at 2.23, which is about 15 seconds off the pace. Preston Calv having a quick spin there down in Canada corner, it looks like. Yeah, did a nice job of getting it turned around and drives off. See if we can see what may have prompted that moment down there heading into the infamous Canada corner. If, uh, his teammate getting into him? No, no, he just tried to follow Andrew Davis through there at the same speed and just lost the rear end under braking as Fogarty comes through the picture as well. Well, Preston Calvert looking racy, going after a GT <laughs> car there in the GT Cup machine. But he <laughs> clearly had a good run. And Andrew probably went, yeah, just follow me, boss. Well, you know, and that's interesting. In the in the drivers' meetings here, one of the things that, that uh, some of the GT drivers said to the GT Cup guys is they said, we're not able to get around you in a straight line here because you don't have anywhere near the downforce. The cars are narrow, but they still make good power. And we're loaded with some drag. And these cup cars in a straight line are very fast. And they said, if you see us behind you, you know, either signal us you don't want us to go by by getting in the middle. Right. Or just lift a little bit. Let us slice through. But in this case, it was Preston going after the GT car. That was pretty impressive. Well, you just can't break. It's not just through the corners. It's in the exactly. brake zones as well. The GT3 cars have a lot more downforce, and uh, you're able to brake a lot later. You're pushing the tire into the ground a lot with more force. Well, and you can see that lead that Udell had, and now look at this starting to shape up as uh, you've got J.D. Davison and Alvaro Parent, and uh, this battle has been stout, and Cooper coming right with them at this point. So that's going to be a battle six, or fifth, sixth, and seventh as they head down into Canada Corner. Cooper's having a nice run here. He's really starting to put the pressure on Alvaro Parent, and that's the man he's chasing in the championship. Right now, Cooper sits in the fourth position in points. Alvaro Parent leads, so he realizes this next position could be super critical. And we're watching there as the number two. He has had himself a tremendous season this year. Cal Marcelli joining the battle, and in GTA, there's the man. Frankie Monacovo has the lead. However, Mike Shine has uh, gone through a bit of those GT cars, and the margin's not quite as large as it was. So going to be some interesting racing when we come back to Road America. All right, there's Monte Calvo, folks, with us here on the global webcast. And just in looking at it, Cal, the margin now back from Monte Calvo to shine has uh, come down to what? Is that looks like five seconds yeah, thereabouts? So. That's right. No, it's, it's really tightening up. You know, Frankie's fast lap is still 18th clear of Michael Shine, but Michael's got a nice run through the traffic. He's cleared uh, Sophronis. He's cleared O'Connell, who's in trouble. And uh, the next man ahead of him on the racetrack in terms of track position is Frankie Montecalvo, the guy he's chasing down in class. 4.9 seconds is the gap right now. And getting a report from the Global Motorsports team. They said Alec uh, has the conversation he's had with the team has basically been car's great. Car is great. And it's showing with the pace that he's running here right now. And here it comes now Eversley, and we're starting to get into the the uh, GT Cup traffic as he is Whoa. coming up right now on the back of Sloan Yuri. Wow. Yeah, that was a little bit loose. That's what he's been talking about, that the rear end has not been underneath that 20 machine for a few events now. They keep uh, dialing on it, but uh, not really found the sweet spot in terms of getting it comfortable for him. But again, on days like day, if your worst day is when you're running in the second position, there's still strong points. Yeah, and I mean, it's sort of been a double whammy for uh, for Sloan because they've had this uh, this uh, setup issue with the car and it being loose, and he also had that bad arm, and uh, he's you know a loose car and a an arm that hurts. Uh, not a good combination when you're suddenly to snap oversteer and the like, and uh, your arm is is not up to the task. But you can see there just disappeared uh, Udell, and here comes Yuri. Here's that margin, blue Porsche to the black Porsche. 
at this stage of the game. The two of them, though, have been able to drop Corey Fergus just a little bit. And uh, although Corey's his fast lap is in the ballpark of those two guys now, and that's great to see. It is. It is going to be. I mean, it's great to see these two young guns going out at Udell and Yuri. Want to add Fergus to that mix as well, <laughs> make it a, a three-horse race this championship season. But they're learning on it. They're testing. They're working really hard. They're not giving up and realize they can get there. And Ferg Corey Fergus loves this racetrack, won a national championship here. A lot of success at Road America. And here's this battle we've been kind of following for fifth which is Davison has it, then the points leader, Parent in the McLaren, then Cooper in the black number eight Cadillac, and then coming up, the number two, DeVilbus Audi. And it's interesting, Cal, when you, these cars get together, look at the size of the greenhouse on the Nissan versus the McLaren, mm. a little bit bigger for the Cadillac. I mean, three and four really very different packages here, uh, and within tenths, within hundreds. I know it's amazing and uh, you know everyone has a little squeak about well my car's not quick enough this week in basic terms but it's hard I mean you've got so many different manufacturers 10 represented in the GT championship here and coming to these different uh, configurations of racetrack you can see right now that McLaren has a lot of downforce it's really quick through this particular corner the carousel but then down the straightaways it's got a little bit more drag involved so it's not going to be as quick he's going to be gapped there so as we said it's all about managing your bad days and right now Alvaro is doing a great job of that. And some of it's relative, isn't it? You're sitting there going, you know, I, we're off the pace. I'm sitting here, you know, I'm back in eighth, <laughs> and it's three-tenths. I mean, the field is that close. They've done a tremendous job, I think, of, of balancing everybody here. The problem is, is that when you're off by just a couple of tenths, instead of being a, a position, it could be seven. Well, when your top ten is full of winners, <laughs> well, there's only it. one winner, so nine people are going to be <laughs> disappointed when they're used to climbing at the top step of the podium. Out of 14 the run up the hill and that's a it's tough for tv to do justice that's the steepness of that climb it's a pretty abrupt climb the nice part of it is is you get that run out of 14 you get a little head of steam built up before you start that uphill i did a bicycle race here once it, it's a definite hill mate i can attest to that i think i was here and watching you <laughs> and i was feeling for you because yeah this is a trend well that and five up to six yeah. i mean there's just some really stout climbs here Oh, bad news. We get the report that Thompson back in the pits once again. Uh, and the, the report we're getting is just a serious handling issue. Yeah, I think what they're doing now is really just using this, using this as a tuning day. They're just trying to get some feedback on the race car, make some subtle adjustments. That's the shock absorber they're going to in the rear corner there, making some changes to the valving possibly, and uh, just seeing if they can get the car more suited for Colin for tomorrow's race. And maybe if they could get that done, you know, get the setup on it, he could throw in one really good lap. He could uh, help him in terms of where he starts tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. That's what it's all about is playing that strategy game in terms of finding a clear space on the racetrack, having the sweet spot with the race car and laying one down. Cooper there getting hurt a little bit, trying to clear the traffic in GT Cup. That's led Marcelli to close right in, down and deep into the break zone into turn eight. Nice job by Marcelli there to make sure he didn't get held up as well. He's just really been superb this year, Kyle Marcelli. That is the older version of the Audi. Uh, doesn't have some of the tricks and whistles of the, of, the, of the new machine, but that team knows the car incredibly well. They had that great success here two years ago, you alluded to, and Kyle has just been wheeling. He really has. I mean, they're kind of a quiet start, let's call it that, to the season. I mean, everyone's sort of like question Mike Skeen leaving that group, bringing in Kyle, who certainly has a great pedigree behind him already at a relatively early stage of his uh, driving career, but... You know, they got that little BOP adjustment a few races ago, lost, I think it was 20 kilograms, and that really brought this car to life, and uh, he's in the fight for the podium, it seems, every week now. Look at that, just twitching and dancing on the brakes there into turn 14, and that's a hugely important corner, so you want to carry every bit of speed you can, but you're tr transitioning out of the Billy Mitchell turn, that blind uphill prow, then trying to set up, trying to feed it into the apex, Oh, and Johnny O'Connell now crawling down the front straight. And that is tough. He's just trying now to make sure that he's out of the way of everybody at this point. And that's a class act by a multiple champion, no question about it. There's Yuri. Here comes J.D. Davison. And uh, that traffic actually gapped those four battling for fifth just a little. 
It has. It's taken a little bit of sting out of that battle right now. And as we've seen so many times this year, Greg, with J.D. Davison in that Nissan, you know, it does develop great power, and uh, but you need to get the steering wheel straight to uh, put the power down. And so he, uh, he kind of runs slightly different lines to some of the more traditional lines that we're seeing from the other drivers around him. But it's all about making it work. Uh, one of the best guys in the IndyCar ch Championship is Scott Dixon. You talk to Mike Cull, he'll say, how's the handling, Scott? And he said, I'm adjusting. He's just changing his line to uh, allow the tire to work at its best, and that's what JD does as well around the course of a race. Is that sort of similar to what uh, you, you know we'd heard about when Rick Mears used to talk about uh, changing his pattern? Yes. The same idea? Yes. I, I mean, I think Rick was more of an oval meister in terms of uh, changing his line around an oval, but same thing. You're just trying to uh, take the load out of the tire and uh, maximize the efficiency. Oh, that's tight. I mean, these guys are... Got to be heads up here. The teams need to give uh, everyone a bit of a warning that Johnny O is really slow. Yeah, but Johnny was trying to get out of the way there, and I think it was just mistimed things just a little bit. And, uh, boy, I'll tell you, that traffic now has really hurt Marcelli. He got hung up just a little bit, and uh, now you can see that Cooper pretty much unto himself in his attack on Perrin. And now does Marcelli get through on Uri? He does. But now he's got some ground to make up. Wow. Huge yeah. amount of ground. He's wrong. Cooper's tail just half a lap ago. And uh, he maybe had a moment. Somewhere. Must have because yeah. uh, he's lost. Uh, looks like two or three seconds here. Looks like that that approach to 14 may have turned a, a little bumpy here well, as, as well. You can see that kind of marking on the track. There's always that little bump. You sort of like come out from the left hand sweep of the Billy Mitchell corner. And you're setting up, and if you take it in really deep, it seems like you find that little undulation right as you're compressing the car. And the, the deeper and harder you're pushing, the more that compression is going to have an effect. Welcome back, everybody. And through the Moraine sweep goes your leader, Ryan Eversley, a place he's quite familiar with since he became a driver for real time racing in the Pro World Challenge GT Championships, as it is the home track for real time and Ryan leading right now over teammate Petey Cunningham. Ryan has been able now to open that margin back up to just over four seconds at this point over his team mate and uh, team principal Petey Cunningham. There is Petey as he comes into the frame here and I think Ryan might be easing off just a little bit. We're into the final stages of this race so we might see that margin actually come down a little bit to me cal the surprise might be the fact that adderley fawn got to third and then hasn't been able to do much with it yeah i think the actors have done a great job here of managing this race and uh, i think don't think it's been about the gap between first and second it's really been about the gap back to the nearest chaser which right now is adderley fong and i really think with that a little mistake that he made down in our stop tech break zone he could have been really pushing these guys a lot harder he had a lot of ground to make up once he cleared that pack yeah, he has. A, it was a great qualifying run right at the end. He put together a stunner and popped to the top. Uh, great pace here. I think it was the fourth straight pole at Road America in GT competition for Bentley. We talked about that. Uh, and it's going to be fun to see what will happen tomorrow. However, what's going on behind him has been pretty interesting. Long finds himself in a relatively quiet fourth, but Davis and Prince and Cooper, this one's not done yet. This is the battle for the uh, final spot in the top five. Yeah, and Cooper really needs to try and dig deep and see if he can find something to get around Alvaro Parent in terms of the big picture of the championship. Oh, Monte Calvo drops away. Does that shine through? That might be. This is for GTA. I think Michael Shine, is that him up ahead? Yeah, it was only seven tenths of a second yeah, last time. Let's take time a look by. here. This is the corner that has really been uh, giving Monte Calvo fits. It's subtle there, but he just tried to straighten his hands a little bit, felt a little bit of a wobble in the back. Straightened his hands, runs wide, and Michael Shine pounces. Boy, Shine has made up a lot of time in this one. And it's not been his lap time. It's just Frankie has really just uh, fallen off the pace a little bit. We spoke to him just a couple of hours ago, and he said, I'm really struggling with the handling of the car, and it's really gone away from him here in the final stages. See a different angle on it, Cal. Yeah, there's just a real subtle move there. I think the car got a little Ooh. bit loose on him. He had to straighten his hands. He runs out wide, and there's a big dip there after the curb. And at that point, dirty tires and the like, you're not exactly going to throw it 100% into the kink either. So, uh, yeah. You can see him there. Yeah. He's really tentative there with the steering inputs on the entry to turn one. And they've just been chasing this one. And uh, you said that they're Look anticipating. At the hands. Look at the hands oh, inside the cockpit. They're anticipating maybe having the new 
McLaren, or a, a Mercedes for possibly Sonoma. And he said, I look so looking forward to that. And there is the 17 of Alec Udell continuing to lead handily in the GT Cup category. Last time by start finish, almost five seconds the margin. He's been able to build over Sloan Yuri, who's got Corey Fergus uh, just a tick or two back from him at this stage. But uh, Udell, it has just been one of those days that has been righteous. It's just uh, continuing to really just show this trend. They just really turned a corner. They struggled a little bit in the early going, but then found the setup that worked for Alec. And uh, I think once you find it with that, that, that class, don't sort of like get too far out of that window. Don't kind of go big changes. Just really fine tune it, even if it doesn't feel right. Make small changes so you don't get lost. As we begin our last lap, Ryan Eversley knifes underneath the start stand, the white flag flying, that margin, we talked about it. I, I had said it was almost five seconds, and I went, yeah, I think Eversley's managing now because it's down to three as they come through and make that run down into turn three. There are those two beautiful TLX GT machines, not GT3 cars, still built to the legacy GT rules, but when they switched them and made them the rear-wheel drive, it brought them uh, a lot more options in terms of what they can do on the cars. And uh, they've, they've been testing them, and a lot of that's been here, and it's showing. And the big question that coming in was the tire degradation. Would these actors run off the tires? Well, right now, the last lap, Petey Cunningham set the fastest lap of everyone in the field, and then Ryan Eversley, the second fastest on that particular lap. So not only have they got the track position, they've got pace at the end of the race as well. Boy, this will be a special one if they can hang on for another half a lap down through seven, plummeting down into another of these downhill braking zones. Not quite as tricky as turn five. Too bad there's another race tomorrow because there would certainly be a party tonight, let oh, me tell boy. you. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, Seepkins Resort might be absolutely a glow especially if they do it again tomorrow but we're getting way ahead of ourselves at this point with this level of competition but this one's going to feel mighty good if they can bring it home through the kink eversley absolutely on rails gives himself that little bit of a margin to the exit as does Petey. And one more time down into Canada Corner, Cal. Uh, it's all about that qualifying and then that brilliant start where he even put the move on Fong, taken the lead, hasn't looked back, managed it superbly well. You can see there just uh, using the TC probably at this stage of the game to get off Canada Corner and try and get it to the stripe. Up through Billy Mitchell and now making the run. Through 14 for the last time onto the front straight. Ryan Eversley feeds it throttle. At Road America, Acura is going to bring home the win, and it might just be a one-two sweep as they come by Eversley celebrating. Petey Cunningham runs right to the wall to celebrate with his team. Real-time racing does it. A one-two finish for Acura here at Road America. And out of Canada corner, Alec Udell will be the next class leader to come by, and he has put together an absolutely superb run. That Global Motorsports Group team, Nev, his engineer, Euro World Motorsports, the package is super complete right now. And Yadell from pole, going to stretch that point margin just a little bit more. A huge win for Alec Yudell. It will be his sixth on the season. What a run he's been able to put together. Sloan Yuri will be in second. And what a story here. Mike Shine. He's done it a couple of times. Late in the race, comes through, picks up another win, Mike does. He did it very late in the going at Lime Rock where he made a pass for the win. That's his fourth. What a story. And a, a double accurate celebration down in turn five maybe, huh? <laughs> They've probably got all their families and friends down there. I wonder if Petey drove by at Ryan and said, no, 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 we got a race from tomorrow. No donuts yet. But look at Ryan celebrating. Loving the moment here. Let's take a look at our results. Eversley, Cunningham, and Adderley Fong in the Bentley will complete the podium long, and Davison hangs on for fifth in that run. Now we go to the second page, and you can see Mike Shine and Monte Calvo 
do come home 1 2 in GTA. Tough day for Frankie after being so quick. And Alec Wilson, uh, Andy Wilson got around McCann for the podium in GTA. And then you look back a little bit further, and really the stories at the back of this one are the ones that were struggling and the most notable there without question. Johnny O'Connell in GT, a huge point leader. And Martin Fuentes retired and may get no points here in terms of GTA. So some big developments at this stage. So, and there is a look. Alec Udell enjoying this moment as he will make his way around the track and into Victory Circle as well. We're going to step away. So when Victory Circle happens, we'll be ready for it. Stay with us, folks.